The image that I obtained is called a mask image. This image contains data and information about all the soft tissue and bone present in my body. After I injected the contrast agent, I took another image that has the same information but includes the arteries filled with the contrast. I then perform subtraction of the two images together, subtracting the mask image from my post-contrast image, which reveals the vessels alone because I removed the parts of the muscle and soft tissue. This is what digital subtraction angiography is about. Sometimes the patient may move while you are taking the contrast. The initial mask image must have the patient in the same position and the same everything because it subtracts pixel from pixel. If there is a shift in the pixel, it will take a different value and subtract from another value. For example, if a pixel had air, it should still have air. But if the patient turned their face forward, it might now have bone. Thus, your subtraction process is not identical in position for the patient. Well, to treat it, they said to treat it with the pixel correction. The pixel correction sees what was next to the pixel or the value next to it and starts to make corrections and adjustments to the existing pixel values, which is called motion correction. It begins to adjust the image, but of course it won't be 100% like the previous one due to the motion that occurred. If there was violent motion, it's very difficult to achieve 100% correction, but at least the pixel can be adjusted or they might tell you to take an image after the injection. After you inject the contrast agent, take a second image. Use this second image for the subtraction. Sometimes the contrast agent may still be present, so the quality of your subtraction may not be as high as if you had just taken the image. This subtraction technique helps you utilize a very small amount of contrast agent for the patient in a safe and controlled manner instead of giving a large amount, which could affect them. It allows you to visualize the vessels better, and this assists you in the diagnosis or treatment procedure. We have the pre-contrast image and the post-contrast image. We subtracted the two from each other to get the subtracted image, which shows the vascular structures. You can not only do this on the frame or the spot you take, but you can also work with dynamic subtraction. This works with every frame that comes down. Each frame is subtracted from the pre-contrast image. For example, the first frame shows the two images being the same, so the image is clear. In the second frame, the vessel starts to appear, and here is the wire, and here is the control image. The subtracted image shows the vessel. In frame number four, here is the vessel. In frame number five, here is the vessel. In frame number six, we will continue. So, you can also work on the existing frames in dynamic imaging, not just in spots. Here is an example of a case of cerebral angiography with a significant aneurysm. So, it started performing the subtraction with different frames, and you have different frames, as you can see, with different frames. It removed the part of the skull from your images, and this is also the pre-contrast image. This is the visage that illuminated it, a face that shone brightly, bringing light to the darkness. It was not just an appearance, but a symbol of hope and inspiration, a beacon guiding the lost, and a reminder of beauty in the world. This visage, with its radiant glow, testified to the power of light over shadow, representing an enduring spirit. The same idea applies here. It's a case where the patient is wearing something, and there is a pre-contrast image. After we inject the contrast agent, we want to show the contrast within the aorta, and it appears in this way. There is something called root mapping. What is root mapping? When you are performing a procedure, and there is a wire inside the vessel, and you start injecting the contrast agent, how do you know where you are as you move the wire? Are you inside the vessel? Did you puncture the vessel and exit, or did you go somewhere else? Is it reasonable to sit and inject a contrast agent that has money, injecting a contrast agent that has exited the place you are in? You won't be able to track it. The contrast agent takes about seven seconds to reach the pulmonary, 
and about 20 seconds to reach the aorta, and it circulates throughout the body for 20-25 seconds before it starts entering the venous system. So, they told me to do something called root mapping. The idea is that I will create an image that helps me know exactly where I am without forgetting how I will take the post-contrast image. This means I will take the pre-contrast image and subtract it from the post-contrast image and I will get a subtract image. Okay, great. And then I will get the... Okay, great. You will use this post-contrast image to see what's happening while you're taking a live image. For example, if your wire is inside the aorta and you take a picture without any contrast agent, it should look like this. No contrast agent for you. But when you subtract the two images from each other, the vessel and the wire will start to appear like this. You begin to move, and now you know exactly where you are, inside or not. You can start moving within your image or within your vessel. I mean, I won't repeat it again, but I benefited from the technique in this matter because I know where my wire is going or where it will move. I coordinate them, take the second frame, subtract, and now I'm moving, knowing exactly where I am and how to locate myself. This is what root mapping is about, and it is, of course, available in fluoroscopy today. So here's the first wire, and here's after I applied the root mapping technique, and I started to enter the vessel where I know exactly where I am, in the cerebral arteries. For example, if an image undergoes correction due to motion, pixel shifting is applied to correct the misregistration or the missing data that occurred due to the change in position. This allows for correction, and the image appears in this way after correction. Of course, as I mentioned, it may not be 100% like the real image. So, up to this point, do you understand, doctors, or are there any issues? All right, we haven't finished our current task yet. So let's continue working on it to ensure everything is completed properly. The process that takes place in the line of electrons coming from the electron gun represents the image, for example, like this. Let's say I have my field of view consisting of a set of lines. These lines are what you are scanning with the electronic TV. You keep moving, for instance, like this, moving like this, moving like this, moving like this, and every point starts to give a signal that reaches the camera and displays the images. Okay, the more parts you have, it means you are doing more scanning of the sections. This will significantly improve your resolution and enhance the details. Well, I call this story horizontal resolution. I have horizontal resolution and vertical resolution. It has a resonant resolution, and in vertical resolution, it has a resonant resolution. I apologize for calling this point vertical resolution. So, vertical resolution means I should be in this direction, and horizontal should be in this direction. When you increase the number of lines, the space between each line starts to decrease, meaning the number of lines present in your field of view that you scanned within the camera increases. So, when you measure the vertical resolution, you measure it, for example, in this area to see if there is a division. If you have a large number of lines in this area or in this square, it improves the resolution. As for horizontal resolution, when I perform a scan, I move, for example, like this, moving in this direction. For example, every time I move to a point, I consider the point next to it, so I move like this. And the number of lines, as we said, controls the vertical resolution. Now I move to this point, and then I take the next point, and so on. 
My movement depends on the signal that is coming to me. The signal that is coming to me means the timing. If this signal has a fast response, in this case, I receive another signal very quickly. The signal that comes to me from the camera tube is fast, so I can quickly access the next point. This timing or the response of the time is referred to as bandwidth. The slower the response time, the longer it takes, the larger the bandwidth, the lower your horizontal resolution. Therefore, I have horizontal resolution and vertical resolution. The vertical resolution depends on the number of scan lines. And the horizontal resolution is what we refer to as the bandwidth of the system. This means that the response or timing that comes to you in the signal to move to the next point is slow, which reduces your horizontal resolution. This clarifies the situation for you. With the use of different colors, I can see that the colors will look similar. Now, this is my field of view, and I have a set of lines here that I am scanning. Look, here, doctor. For example, you take this point and scan the first point. Once that's done, it starts giving you a signal. So I'm creating an image on my vector on my screen at this point. Now, I begin to move according to this incoming signal. For instance, the line starts to move. How does it move? It moves line by line. If you look at my hand, I'm moving like this, for example. All right, each point gives a signal. And then I see here point by point, the next point, the next point, the next point, and so on. Now, if the width of this line, if the number of lines that I am scanning is high, will having more lines in the image give you more information or less? More, right? So does that increase your resolution or not? OK. I increase the resolution in which direction? The vertical direction or the horizontal direction? The vertical direction. That's why I called it vertical resolution, which depends on the number of lines present. All right? Now, the signal comes in, and it takes this point. Then it moves to the next point on the same line. You are seeing the resolution in the horizontal line, not in the vertical. In the horizontal, if your response to the incoming signal has a delay, Will that affect your resolution or not? It won't affect. Why? Because resolution depends on the vertical, on the amount of information present. All right. According to the line itself, I have the vertical here in this direction. I have information like this, and I have information like that. All right. I have information in one direction. I have information in x and y. OK? the information in the y direction. I deserve the number of lines that cover this area. The more there are, the better information you get. Now, when you move in the x direction, you need your response to have synchronization between this and that, and there should be no lag. Your bandwidth should be low to give you a good scan, or if a scan is present, it reduces the distance between the points, which will enhance your results. Is that clear, doctor? OK? Is OK, doctor? Doctor, I don't know what the concept of bandwidth is. Well, I have two things, doctor. I have the whole problem in the horizontal. The horizontal is the concept that I see, the horizontal in the x direction. Subscribe to the channel. Bandwidth expresses the timing of 
for example, a signal from the camera tube to the picture tube that will represent the same point. If the response is slow, how do I move? I move point by point. And the process of movement depends on what? It depends on my signal based on the incoming signal, right? For instance, now there is a shift and I am relying on that shift based on the incoming signal. If I have a rapid response, the time, which I call the time when the signal comes, will be fast or slow, fast. The time represented here is the bandwidth. Bandwidth reflects the time, so. When it changes, it will affect the resolution in the horizontal direction. Now, we are supposed to cover the part related to fluoroscopy, which is the part of the charge coupled device, CCD system. It's like if we remember, we thought before about where the charge coupled device, CCD, is located and how it functions. The CCD is a crucial component in capturing images by converting light into electronic signals. It definitely relied on the indirect dish of geography, which is a complex system that depended on having the signal transmitted through phosphor. The phosphor, a substance that emits light when exposed to radiation, plays a significant role in this process by ensuring the signal is effectively converted and transmitted. This intricate process highlights the importance of each component working in harmony. Okay, let me explain. Through the technology known as the thin film transistor, which is commonly referred to as TFT. All right. Remember the topic of TFT, which I had specifically the part about thin film transistor that involved charge and transistors, and the topic of fill factor related to digital radiograph. Now, the charged coupled device, CCD, is the first chargeable device. The intention behind this development was to effectively address and resolve the ongoing issues associated with the electronic camera, ensuring that it functions optimally and meets the expected standards of performance and reliability. We will talk about the silicon substrate in which the charged coupled device, CCD, is located, and it is considered a light-sensitive array. Does light fall on the silicon? If we remember that the topic of silicon is like what they call something like a semiconductor, ionization occurs, and I start to have electron hole pairs. The collection of these electrons begins, and they start to be stored in the pixels. Remember the topic of the pixel that used to take the signal and give it to the capacitor, and then it would send it to the signal. The same technique. The whole idea is to create ionization or receive the light photons and form the electron hole pairs. These electrons begin to accumulate in the existing pixels and then they translate their signal. This is the alternative in the field of technology and digital imaging. The story about the cameras that are available, I'm not talking about the camera itself. I replaced the electronic TV with the charge coupled device. I'm not talking about the image intensifier. The CCD takes the light photons that come in and starts to gather the electrons on the capacitor, which then gives you the light photons or provides you with my signal that later gets transformed into my display monitor. This is not digital. I haven't replaced the image intensifier with the digital system yet. This is something else, something different. For example, if its size is smaller, does it consume less energy or is it efficient? The topic of the issue that was happening is no longer present here. And it is considered, of course, with the step on in the the long lifetime and surface maintenance are better 
and of course it is compatible with digital X-ray imaging models. This is an alternative to the electronic camera tube system that captures the image. Of course, we all remember the topic of the Vlad penal detector, where I completely removed the image intensifier and started receiving the X-ray photons that fell. Remember that I had something called indirect and something called direct. The indirect, when we recall, was talking about the cesium iodide scintillator layer, which then gives me the light photons. We were discussing the matrix that contains amorphous selenium which consists of pixels that collect the charge and then we receive the charge and form the image. This is the same idea or the same part of digital radiography that we use in the image intensifier. However, here there are some advantages in detective quantum efficiency which relies on a higher light collection than the image intensifier. When the detective quantum efficiency is higher, it will help me reduce the dose or increase it. Reducing the dose will help me and I won't increase it. So, detective quantum efficiency remains higher at low dose for the pitch. We all know that the digital part provided a wide dynamic range. Remember the characteristic curve? You could improve the image quality even with a lower dose through post-processing and windowing. As for the size of the image intensifier, we have eliminated it, which is considered part of a flat banner, making it more compact and smaller. Now, there is something called special resolution and something called temporal resolution. What is the difference between special resolution and Temporal resolution. Special resolution refers to spatial resolution, which means distinguishing between two points that are next to each other. How long can I see these two points next to each other? This is special resolution. Temporal resolution relates to something that is moving. While it is moving, I can see this object with high resolution against its background. Therefore, the term temporal always refers to something that is in motion. While it is moving, is there a loss in its resolution or not? Especially if the motion is fast. If I am moving my hand quickly, can you detect my hand better? Or if it moves slowly? When it moves slowly, the efficiency of the system to detect or resolve the visuals or the objects is affected. This is temporal resolution. Temporal resolution allows you to reach a matrix size of 2480, which is very high. 2480. This is very high. It allows you to increase the number of bits per pixel to 14, which will increase the number of gray values available and significantly enhance the contrast. But of course, this will come at the expense of image size and will require high storage capacity. All the artifacts we talked about, such as vigilating, S distortion, and S function, do not exist because they were heavily dependent on the design of the image intensifier. The zoom that occurs allows you to design the image, but the zoom you perform is not the electronic design meaning it is not the zoom of the image intensifier. Therefore, it will not enhance your special resolution. Yes, you are doing zooming, but that is something in your post-processing. However, the other method enhances the special resolution because it performs electronic focusing, reduces the diameter of the electronic beam, and improves your resolution. Did we cover a part of your chapter?
but the conversation is enjoyable. Thank God. I just hope you all say you understood. That's the most important thing because, you know, it makes one feel satisfied. Truly. Well, tomorrow, God willing, we will try to talk about the topic of dose.